The Gibraltar skull is one of the most significant Neanderthal remains ever discovered, providing insight into the morphology, behavior, and genetics of the extinct relatives of modern humans. The skull was discovered in Gibraltar in 1848, years before the well-known Neanderthal discoveries in Germany, but its significance was not immediately recognized. The skull was discovered at Forbes's quarry, which is located on the northern face of the rock of Gibraltar. This discovery was significant because it occurred nearly a decade before the first known Neanderthal specimen was discovered in the Neander Valley in 1856. Despite its importance, the skull was little studied for several years until Neanderthal fossils drew scientific attention. She provides an important window into pre-contact Neanderthal populations that were isolated but adaptable to the Iberian Peninsula's unique environmental conditions. The skull belonged to a mature adult female, often referred to as the Gibraltar woman. Analysis of her cranial features suggests she had a robust structure with a low, sloping forehead, prominent brow ridges, and a large nasal aperture, all of which are characteristic of Neanderthal anatomy. This discovery was critical in recognizing that Neanderthals were a distinct hominin species separate from modern Homo sapiens, albeit capable of interbreeding. However, Contamination issues have made it difficult to obtain an accurate age for the Gibraltar skull. The skull was discovered well before modern dating methods, such as radiocarbon dating. Additionally, the skull may have absorbed substances from the environment or previous conservation treatments, complicating radiocarbon and other chemical dating methods. To protect fossils during the 19th and early 20th centuries, Museums frequently used preservatives and glues, which introduced contaminants. These substances can introduce exogenous carbon, making radiocarbon measurements inaccurate. Collagen is required for radiocarbon dating of bones, but the skull is extremely old, and much of the collagen has degraded, leaving insufficient material for accurate radiocarbon dating. Furthermore, precise stratigraphic data is missing, because excavation techniques at the time of discovery over 175 years ago were quite primitive. Without this context, dating methods based on associated sediments cannot be used accurately. Due to these concerns, the Gibraltar skull has not been directly dated. Instead, researchers use comparative dating techniques to examine other Neanderthal remains in similar contexts. By some estimates, the Gibraltar skull is estimated to be around 100,000 years old, placing her in the Eemian period. Thus, the Gibraltar skull is one of the earliest known Neanderthal fossils and provides insight into the physical characteristics of female Neanderthals. Although the remains are limited to the skull, comparisons to other female Neanderthal specimens allow us to infer aspects of her body type. Neanderthals evolved to thrive in harsh, glacial environments, and their bodies show numerous adaptations to cold climates. Despite living in the milder climate of southern Iberia, Gibraltar woman is likely to have retained the short, stocky build associated with Neanderthals. This compact body structure reduced the surface area exposed to the cold, preserving her body heat. DNA tests confirm the skull belonged to a Neanderthal female but no other genetic information was able to be obtained. According to studies of other female Neanderthals, Gibraltar woman stood approximately 150 centimetres, about 5 feet tall, and weighed 60 kilograms, about 130 pounds. Despite her short stature, she would have had a broad, powerful build with a high muscle-to-fat ratio. This body type was necessary for performing physically demanding survival tasks such as hunting, gathering, and tool-making. Gibraltar woman's short, stocky build would still have been advantageous, allowing her to move quickly through rugged terrain while maintaining strength for physically demanding tasks. The robust nature of the Neanderthal skeleton suggests that both males and females were extremely muscular in comparison to modern humans. The muscle attachment points on Neanderthal bones indicate that they lived a physically demanding life. Female Neanderthals also had strong upper body musculature, including broad shoulders and thick arms. It's reasonable to assume that the Gibraltar woman had similar characteristics. Although no postcranial remains, referring to the skeleton other than the skull, have been discovered, her skull indicates a thick neck and strong jaw muscles, implying a powerful physique. 
While there is no direct evidence for the skin and hair color of the Gibraltar woman, recent advances in genomics enable us to draw reasonable conclusions based on DNA extracted from other Neanderthal remains. Studies on Neanderthal genetics have revealed fascinating insights into their pigmentation, implying that Neanderthals had a variety of skin tones and hair colors similar to modern humans. Genomic analysis of Neanderthal remains has revealed that pigmentation varied from light to dark brown skin and red to brown or black hair. The genetic diversity discovered in Neanderthals suggests that individuals living in different environments may have evolved a variety of pigmentation traits tailored to their specific habitats. This diversity suggests that the Gibraltar woman may not have looked identical to her counterparts in more northern, colder regions. She may have appeared more similar to Neanderthals from the eastern Mediterranean region. The Gibraltar woman, living at the southern edge of the Neanderthal range, may have had an intermediate phenotype with olive-toned or moderately dark skin. In addition to her skin tone, the Gibraltar woman could have had dark brown or black hair, which is common in populations that have adapted to higher sun exposure. Her Neanderthaloid face would have been framed by her long hair, whether dark or auburn, giving her a unique yet familiar appearance. While most discussions focus on skin and hair color, Neanderthal genetic evidence has also hinted at their eye color. Some Neanderthals carried gene variants linked to lighter eye colors, such as blue or hazel. Darker eye colors, such as brown or amber, were most likely more common. Nonetheless, if the Gibraltar woman had darker pigmentation overall, she may have had dark brown eyes to match her hair and skin tone. The Gibraltar Neanderthal woman's potential skin and hair color were most likely determined by a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors which still are not fully understood by geneticists. Whatever her appearance, the Gibraltar woman is a fascinating example of a population that thrived on the southern edge of the Neanderthal range, demonstrating both resilience and adaptability in a changing Stone Age environment. Whatever the case, the estimated age of the Gibraltar Neanderthal skull is still debated, with some researchers suggesting that it could be as old as 100,000 years. This revision reflects newer radiometric techniques and a better understanding of Neanderthal chronology in southern Iberia. As mentioned, some studies suggest that the skull is closer to 100,000 years old, based on comparisons with other Neanderthal fossils and archaeological evidence from southern Iberia. If the skull is around 100,000 years old, then she lived during one of the warm interglacial periods, known as the Eemian interglacial period. Warmer temperatures and higher sea levels, even higher than today, and lush vegetation throughout Europe made this a relatively favorable environment for Neanderthals. African fauna, including water buffalo and hippopotamus, roamed all over Europe during this time, and an extinct species of pygmy hippo lived on the island of Cyprus. Indeed, the rock of Gibraltar's southerly latitude aligns it closely with other regions in southern Europe, northern Africa, Cyprus, and the Middle East, which are quite similar in latitude, showing Gibraltar's geographic position in the transitional zone between southern Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. Gibraltar would have been a lonely, isolated place, but also a safe refuge. Neanderthal females, unlike many modern human females, most likely engaged in physically demanding activities such as hunting, foraging, and tool production. She would have collected firewood, pine cones, and birch bark for use in fire starting and tar production. Found in temperate regions, pine trees have long been tapped for their resin. Pine resin was used for waterproofing and treating wounds in the past. The resin could be distilled to create tar, or pitch, which was used by Neanderthals as a glue for various purposes. Gibraltar woman could have also collected acorns, wild olives, hazelnuts and chestnuts to be roasted over an open fire. She also would have collected a huge variety of plants, and we can make educated guesses on what plants she gathered based on the fact that Neanderthals seem to live similar to other early hunter-gatherer populations. Wild berries and fruits would also have been collected in summer, including wild blackberries and strawberries, grapes and plums. Wild figs were abundant and provided a nutritious source of sugar, fiber, and other nutrients. 
Tubers, including wild carrots and parsnips, may have been collected, as well as leafy greens, such as spinach and nettles. She could have collected the bark of willow, which contains a compound similar to aspirin, and yarrow may have been used to treat wounds, reduce bleeding and relieve inflammation. Wild hemp could have been collected and used for making rope or other fibres. Along the coast, driftwood would have been collected for firewood and also making tools, as this wood was very soft and easy to carve. Seashells and whale bones washed up on the beaches would have been used for all kinds of useful things as well. Just imagine all the massive driftwood and whale bones that would have been washed up on the beaches would have allowed for larger forests in some areas, as well as open savanna-like regions inhabited by herbivores. Neanderthals in the Gibraltar region most likely exploited these environments, using their hunting skills to pursue large mammals and possibly gathering coastal resources like shellfish. Other Neanderthal sites in Spain and Portugal show that these populations were also skilled at both terrestrial hunting and food gathering in coastal environments. In conclusion, the Gibraltar Neanderthal skull sheds light on the morphology, genetics and environment of Neanderthals in southern Iberia. Her relationship with other Neanderthals exemplifies the interconnectedness of Neanderthal populations and their genetic heritage. These discoveries help in reconstructing Neanderthals' adaptive strategies for survival in a challenging and fluctuating environment. Gibraltar, located at the tip of the southern Iberian peninsula, may have been one of Neanderthals' last refuges, especially as Homo sapiens began to spread throughout Europe. Genetic evidence indicates that the Gibraltar population, like other Neanderthals, faced demographic pressure and decline near the end of the Stone Age, most likely due to competition with Homo sapiens and other challenges. Finally, according to another peer-reviewed study in the journal Science, human skin tone has varied for 900,000 years, and some ancestral light skin gene variants are shared between the African Bushmen and archaic hominins, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, which suggests a shared common ancestry for this trait before the split of the three hominin lineages. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you, and take care.